What if I told you that every AI benchmark you've seen from ChatGPT's impressive scores to Claude's latest achievements is fundamentally rigged? Now, I know this may come as a big shocker for you guys. It really wasn't for me. But new studies, and I'm going to actually go to like three different studies, just expose that companies like OpenAI and Google get special access to test their models multiple times, retract bad scores, and only publish their best results. Meanwhile, a separate research paper reveals that AI models can literally detect when they're being evaluated, completely undermining the whole integrity of these tests. But here's the scariest part. We've hit such severe over overfitting that models are memorizing answers instead of learning, leading to what researchers called model collapse. Now, are we watching an entire AI industry built on fraudulent test scores? And what happens when that bubble bursts? Let's dive into this today. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so this ben benchmark rigging scandal isn't just about cheating on tests. It's about an entire industry built on false performance metrics. So when AI companies can game their scores while claiming breakthrough capabilities, we're heading for some real reality check here pretty quick. So this game has been going on for them to just be in a massive money grab for a long time. But we're going to break down how deep this goes and why it proves that we're hitting some diminishing returns. Now, I want to dive into some of these uh, some of these interesting marks here, right? And then I'm going to go into some of my analysis of it. So AI benchmarking platform is helping top companies rig their model performances. Ella Marina, a popular benchmarking for large language model, has been accused of giving preferential treatment to AIs by, uh, made by big firms, potentially enabling them to game their results. Now, um, uh, they effectively uh, places two unidentified large language models in a battle to see which can best tackle a prompt, right? However, researchers have claimed that the benchmark is skewed, granting major LMs, quote, undisclosed private testing practices that gives them an advantage over open source LLMs. Surprise, the open source ones are getting beat up on, right? So beginning as Chatbot Arena, they started in 2023. And of course, as always, they started with good intentions. But their analysis suggests that a handful of preferred providers, the big ones, right? Meta, OpenAI, Google, and Amazon have been, quote, granted disproportionate access to data and testing as their models appear in a higher number of battles, conferring, conferring their final versions with a significant advantage. So providers like Google and OpenAI have received an estimated 19.2% and 20.4% of all the data on the arena, respectively. So they basically took the answers to the test, trained their models on them, and then surprisingly, their models perform really well on it, which is great. So let's dive into this one. This is one I was just reading, right? In the last few months, we've seen increasingly clear examples of reward hacking on our tasks. AI systems trying to cheat and get impossibly high scores. They do this by exploiting bugs in our scoring coding or subverting the task setup rather than actually solving the problem they've given them. And this is from Meter, right? Somebody who's doing some of the tests, right? And it says, we've been running, we've been running a range of models on tasks, testing autonomous, autonomous software in AI and R&D capabilities. The most recent frontier models have engaged in increasingly sophisticated reward hacking, attempting, often successfully, to get a higher score by modifying the test or scoring code. So basically what they go through here and explain, and if you look, so this is like an example of where they take, you know, these co these agents, right? And they run them against each other. And surprisingly, you know, OpenAI Codex, Cursor, Devon, all these code gen all test high and higher than the open source models because surprise, they've been cheating on the tests. So this is one where they, and this is another one here where large language models often know that they've been evaluated. So um, I'm gonna dig into some of these here for you today, but the interesting things about these is that researchers analyzed 2.8 million different battles on LM Arena and discovered that major tech companies like OpenAI, Google, and Meta received disproportionately uh, disproportionate access, meaning more access to the data. Now. This means that as they went to do the tests, almost 20% of the actual data came straight back at them from the models. These companies can test multiple pre-release versions, retract poor benchmark scores, and only submit their highest performing models to the leaderboard. So the study published by ARXIV uh, shows, and that's that study I was showing you, shows that this creates a systematic bias where te big tech can overfit their models to benchmark performance without improving actual quality. Now, smaller companies and open source projects don't get the sample test 
possessing privilege. So it creates a very unlevel playing field. Uh, but it also like, and, and why do you think, you know, I'll give you one big reason, right? There's a lot of money getting pumped into uh, these frontier, as they call them, the frontier models, right? So a groundbreaking study from EXIV that I was just showing you here shows also that um, frontier models can detect when they're being evaluated with 83% accuracy. So they've actually trained in the models to know when they're being tested. So Gemini 2.5 Pro achieved an AUC, an AUC. I mean, there's so many of these testing frameworks anymore, I can't keep track of them. <laughs> an AUC of 0.83 in classifying whether interactions came from evaluations or real world deployment scenarios. This evaluation awareness means that models could behave differently during testing than an actual use, making all the performance metrics totally meaningless. So when you hear all this, oh, we jumped by 10%, well, of course you did. You pumped 10% more of the data into your training models. So this discovery totally invalidates years of AI progress uh, and their claims because we can't trust the benchmarks because they're cheating the test. Now, European researchers conducted a review of 100 studies and found that numerous issues related to the design and application of benchmark tests, including data contamination. Training data contamination occurs when an AI model inadvertently learns from the same data that they'll later be tested on, essentially memorizing the answer. So since most, most benchmarks exist on public internet, they inevitably get scraped and included into the training data set, making clean evaluation totally impossible. Now, the contamination ranges from information level exposure, like metadata and patterns, to actually complete label level memorization of the answers. So companies are now desperately trying to create private benchmarks and dynamic testing to avoid this contamination, but in most cases it's too late, right? So model overfitting traditionally refers to learning training data too well while failing to generalize. And that's what we're now starting to see, right? We're starting to see these models get so big that they've learned all the traded training data that they can't actually, uh, they can't actually um, learn, quote, learn the, the data, right? So AI companies iteratively tune their models specifically to perform well on popular benchmarks like MMLU, resulting in systems that excel at tests, but then when you go to use them, fail because if it doesn't look like the test, it didn't memorize that answer, right? So in my 25 years of software development, I've seen this pattern with every technology hype cycle, optimizing for metrics instead of real world performance. The research community has been hill climbing on the same benchmarks for years, creating models that are essentially very expensive test taking machines. So we're measuring AI progress using fundamentally flawed metrics that encourages gaming the system rather than actually making something useful. Now, if your company has systems that aren't really working very well for you, make sure you reach out to us because we can help you connect those systems and get them working. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. Now, model collapse occurs when AI systems train on synthetic data generated by other AI systems, creating a degenerative feedback loop that destroys model quality. So not only are we seeing a problem where we're having the model overfitting because it's being trained on the scores or the answers, now it's generating even more and more data and actually starting to collapse because it's actually getting even worse. So they're training so hard on the data to make sure that the model fitting happens that they che cheat the scores and then they generate a whole bunch of other data and this is what we call model collapse. So this is why we're starting to hit the point of diminishing returns because there's no new good data that's clean. So as AI generated data and the content flood the internet, future models inevitably are gonna be trained on the synthetic data. It's basically eating its own vomit, right? And, and that's the problem, right? Researchers, and sorry for the crass analogy, but like that's the reality of it. Researchers found that this creates irreversible defects where models lose touch with actual data distribution and starts hallucinating more frequently. So as I've talked about previously, and we see, have seen the difference where uh, uh, OpenAI's 01 model was hallucinated at 16% and 03 was in the 30% and 04 mini is at the uh, 40%. This is why we're starting to see this, right? We're seeing that irreversible defects and it's, they're just having, it's becoming harder and harder to clean this off. So the Oxford study demonstrates that each generation of model training on synthetic data becomes progressively worse, evaluating, uh, eventually producing complete gibber gibberish. So one of my commenters actually uh, used, gave this analogy and I love this analogy. It's like if you take an old Xerox, right? I'm, I'm dating myself to even know what a Xerox is, right? But you take a piece of paper, you put it in a copy machine and that copy comes out. You take that and put it back into the copy machine and you put it, take that output and put it back in a copy machine and then hold the two up. 
the last one's going to look like crap compared to the first one. That's what we're seeing. We're witnessing the collapse in real time as the internet becomes polluted with this AI generated text that future models will inevitably consume. So AI companies are now engaging in benchmark shopping where they test their models on hundreds of different benchmarks and only publicize the one where they perform well. This selective reporting creates a false impression of consistent improvement when companies are actually just finding favorable test conditions. The pressure to show benchmark improvement has led to increasingly narrow optimization. Multiple researchers noted that tests are often designed a spectacle to hype AI for investors. And that's a quote from one of those reports that I just showed you, rather than measure genuine capabilities. So companies can now engineer their training spe specific, especially ugh, around known benchmarks, making the test meaningless for assessing real world performance. So big tech companies have developed sophisticated methods to manipulate benchmark results and include multiple model submissions, selective data exposure, and coordinate the testing, right? So the research reveals that certain commercial models appear more frequently in benchmark battles, conferring systematic advantages in, through the increased exposure. So despite the massive increase in computing and training costs, recent AI models show dramatically slower improvement rates compared to previous generations. OpenAI's upcoming Orion model reportedly shows much smaller gains than previous generation leaps. So we saw a lot from uh, GPT 2.5 to 3 and 3 to 3.5. But now as we started to see the O, oh, the, reason, the reasoning models, and I'm doing another report on that one for you guys tomorrow on what Apple's found with that. As we see each of these progress, we're seeing less, that's what we call diminishing returns, right? They're putting more in to get less out, right? So they're continuing to see this diminishing return. We've hit the statistical approximation limit of current approaches. No amount of benchmark gaming can overcome the fundamental constraints of token prediction. This diminishing return pattern explains why companies are increasingly relying on benchmark manipulation rather than actually relying on technological breakthroughs, right? We had RAG and a lot of these other systems, a lot of these other technological breakthroughs. And now we're starting to hook uh, our LLMs up to MCP and functions. So they become more useful as they can start to go search the internet. So the AI research community has essentially abandoned scientific rigor in favor of marketing market driven benchmark competition. So peer review process can't keep up with the speed of AI development, allowing companies to make ups unsubstantiated claims say that word 10 times fast, that go unchallenged for months. The same researchers who create benchmarks often work for the companies being evaluated, create obviously con obvious conflict of interest. The whole peer review process around this is getting broken. Academic conferences increasingly resemble product launch events where benchmark scoring matter more than methodology, methodology, methodology uh, pressures and rigor. The pressure to publish positive results has led to widespread, widespread P hacking equivalent behavior where researchers iterate until they find favorable benchmark results. So trillion dollar AI valuations surprisingly are driving this surprise money's behind it. And these valuations are largely based on benchmarking performance. So investors realize that impressive test scores don't translate to real world capabilities. We're faced with a correction similar to the dot com crash. And that's what I've been predicting of a bubble burst. People think that I'm saying that when the bubble bursts, that AI is going to go away. AI is not going to go away, folks. We can't stick our head in the sands. We have to learn how to use it. But just as um, the Google CEO has recently called it, AJI which is artificial jagged intelligence means that we have to be able to work around these new tools knowing they're not perfect. So even hardware companies like Nvidia could see the valuation correction when the market realizes that scaling assumptions were based on fraudulent metrics because it's been a mass grab to try to get hardware as fast as you can. But this creates a perfect storm where financial, technical, and ethical failures converge to undermine the entire AI investment. So while companies tout impressive benchmark scores, enterprise customers are discovering that real-world AI performance falls a lot shorter, and the gap between the benchmark performance and practical deployment success is widening. IBM recently uh, announced that only 16% of AI projects have actually reached production. That's a staggering number. In any other uh, type of rollout, that would have been a crash and burn. So the benchmark rigging scandal validates what many pra uh, practitioners have suspected, that current AI capabilities are massively old, oversold, i.e. hype. So Linus Travold got blasted, and I got blasted for quoting Linus Travold over the last few months by saying that it was 90% hype and 10% reality. 
And yet the Google CEO just recently said in a recent interview that 10% is the amount of increase that Google, the king of all data, has seen implementing AI into their systems. So instead of chasing benchmark scores, companies need to focus on specific measurable business outcomes that AI can reliably deliver. Don't just slap AI on your website, get a real use case for it, put those LLM to work. They're pretty fantastic. You can do some awesome stuff with them more than just a chat, fancy chat bot, right? The future belongs to a company that can identify this amazing new technology and put it to work. This scandal should accelerate the, sh the shift towards specialized domain specific AI tools to solve real problems rather than trying to ace standardized tests. The silver lining is that the crisis will ultimately lead to more honest evaluation methods and realistic expectations about what AI can do for you. Now, if your company is having some struggle with getting some things implemented, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, we love to build software for people. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I love to have a great conversation. Make sure you leave a comment down below and make sure you like and subscribe. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as to build custom software solutions for your company. And here's some of the services that we offer. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason, and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security, and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet, but exceed your strategic goals. Whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo, and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.